Now you'll know if you've looked at other videos on this website, this is the section where we ask our guests to give us the benefit of their tips and tricks that maybe they've used in the past to become the success that they are now. Brian Fields is my guest from Fields Butchers of Anlaby. Um, I want to, if I may, I've got a couple of examples here. Okay. Uh, that <clears throat> is more about retail. It's certainly yep. not connected to the food industry. But it, it, am I right in thinking that, you know, you are in the retail industry, you need to have a similar outlook to shops selling jackets and ties? Yeah, definitely, yeah. I, I think any, any retail business can be compared, you know, like for like. Is that, is that where you think you've maybe succeeded more so than other butchers' shops? I'm not saying that they haven't succeeded, but they treat themselves very much as a... There's a sausage. There's a pork pie. There's a chicken breast. Whereas you treat you 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 treat people as the customer who wants a product, not just some food. I think it's all about moving with the times and moving with your customers because your customers always change and evolve, and what they want is always going to be different. And you've got to constantly keep you know evaluating that and and moving to give them what they want. Mm. That keeps them coming back to you and not deserting you. Let's, let's, let's go to the first question. For example, someone looking to open a high street shop selling menswear, something like a retail outlet. Yeah. Um, where should they locate? Um, difficult, really, but you've got to look at what you are actually going to be selling or doing, and you've got to do your homework. Find out if that area, you know, is there an opening for that business within that area? Is it dominated by that kind of business already? Um, and it's all about finding that little niche spot for you to mm. open up and grow your business. Were you lucky in, in, the, in the spot that you found? Because you're on the high street in a little parade of shops with a lay-by beside you so you can actually pull in and stop. I mean, was that luck or judgment that got you um, To be honest, a fair bit of it was luck, really. Um, it, was a, it was a butcher shop already that had closed down and it had been shut for about six months. Uh, I'd seen it just sat there and I knew it would be a good prime spot. Uh, parking always helps, it is a big issue nowadays. Um, you've got to have your customer able to pull up and come into your business. People don't like to walk too far nowadays. Mm. What about refitting? I mean one of the questions that we've got here is, is about refitting. You know, There'll be uh, many small and medium sized businesses who will be feeling the pinch, uh, yeah. particularly at the moment. How far do you go with a refit? Is it worth refitting or is it just spend a weekend with a pot of paint and put some carpet tiles down? Um, no, it's definitely worth uh, refitting. Um, I mean, when I first opened the business, it was very, very basic and I was on a shoestring budget and, like you say, it was the pot of paint, you know. Um, but gradually reinvesting in the business and I, I think you can't afford not to do a refit. The business has got to look right, it needs to represent what you're doing. Um, people, customers nowadays want a nice, clean, bright environment. They're used to that from the big multiples and if you're going to be a small business competing with them, you've got to give them the sort of the atmosphere yeah. and look yeah. that they're used to. Yeah, so it's about the right... They've got, to, they've got to walk into your small independent business and not feel that they're walking into somewhere inferior to the big multiples because you can offer more than the big multiples with your service and quality. What about competition? Uh, for example, you <coughs> have a shop, someone opens a shop down the road that is doing exactly the same as you. Uh, how do you go about dealing with that? Um, yeah, that's always going to happen. And first, you've got to be true to yourself with what you're doing. Um, I don't think you can afford to sort of, um, you know, if, if they're sort of undercutting you, having a battle on price isn't the way forward. I think you've got to go for what your customers have been used to, which is the quality, um, the service, and make sure you're better than the other people that have opened up near you. Mm. Um, and I think that's the best way forward. And how do, you, how do you go about selling more? I mean, if, for example, you're doing quite well in the marketplace as it is, but you want to, you want to sell more of your product, be it port pies or be it ladies' wear, uh, how do you go about increasing your market share? Yeah, um, you've got to invest in a good website and look at various ideas, whether it be leafleting, um, little adverts going out via email, you know, create yourself a database for your customers so you can communicate with them. Um, I mean, we've produced a booklet, which is ideal for our trade, um, you know, but you could send out 
leaflets, brochures, advertising in various magazines. You've got to get your, your name out there and your brand. Um, keep all your brand the same, so you've got the same colours and everything all the way through, uh, and try to cr create a nice corporate image that you spread out as far and wide as you can, really. Mm. The other thing, of course, is price, isn't it? If, you've, if, yeah. if, if you're selling a product at X and someone opens a shop down the road and they can sell it the same product for Y, how do you deal? I mean, do you, do you just price match and be done with it? It, depend, it depends on the product, really. Um, I mean, depending what trade you're in, you know, if the, if the shop down the road can sell some, the same item for cheap, you know, cheaper than you can, you know, how are they managing to buy it cheaper than you? You know, are they paying the same price or are they buying it, you know, more cost effectively uh, and look at how you can buy yourself? Um, would be probably one of the first starting points. Um, and then look at you know look at it from that point of view. But competition in the high street isn't the bad thing necessarily. Um, you're always going to have competition. I'm a butcher shop, and I'm surrounded by the big supermarkets. They were they're continually trying to undercut us, um, but they can't touch us for quality and service. Um, you know we sell a better product, and and that's why people come back to us. Thanks for the tips and the tricks. Welcome. Good to see you, Brian. Brian Fields.